Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at some basic transformations of signals. The first one is time reversal. In this case, the independent variable is assumed to be time. If the variable is space, then it becomes a reflection. In this example, we can determine the time reverse signal of the original signal by replacing t, that is time t, with minus t. That is, this signal basically represents the original signal, that is, it has a trough at value close to minus 100 and a peak at a value close to minus 50. And its reverse signal, that is, its reflection, should have them at negative of these values, that is, value close to 100 and then the peak is at the value close to negative of minus 50, that is, which is again po close to positive 50. Now, let us look at some illustration. In this simulation, we will see the original signal and its reflection. That is, the original signal is a sinusoid from minus 150 to plus 150 uh, and its reverse signal is basically the green plot, which is exactly opposite to the original signal. In this case, we can also see that when you add up these two signals, you will get exactly zero. This is because the sinusoidal signal is a odd signal. That is, that is sine of minus x is equal to minus of sine of x, that is negative of the original signal. Let us look at another example. In this case, we will look at a, a periodic signal, that is a signal that does not repeat, that does not have a repetitive structure, that is the original signal is basically a sinusoidal of an exponential function. When it is reversed, it will have this structure. Now, let us look at the second transformation, that is scaling property, that is the original signal x of t can be scaled by replacing the time t with a scaled version of the value t, that is a times t, where a is the scaling factor. In this example, we see a sinusoid and the time t is replaced by half of t, that is sine of a function of t becomes sine of a function of t by 2, then we have the new signal, which is basically a stretched version of the original signal. We can basically see that the wavelength actually doubles. Now, let us look at some simulation. This is the original sinusoid, the blue signal is the original sinusoid and the red one is the scaled version. And now, we can also see that by changing the scaling factor, we can by say for example, increase it to 2. Then we will see that the signal will have basically higher frequency. That is, blue, the blue plot is the original signal and the red one is the scaled version where the scale is 2. Now, let us look at another example. The original signal is basically a sinusoid of an exponential function. And when you increase the scale, say to 3 from 1, we basically see high frequency components in the signal. So, an intuitive example of scaling can be seen in uh, can be seen when you are actually playing either audio or video record. Uh, for example, uh, when A is equal to 2, you are basically playing the record at twice the speed. And when A is equal to 1 by 2, you are playing the record at half the speed. It's just like using the fast forward button in the video player. Now, let us look at the final transformation that is shifting. In this, uh, for this property, you can obtain the shifted signal by simply replacing the original time t with a value t minus t naught, where t naught is the amount of shift. This, uh, these plots basically show the original signal which, which has a peak very close to minus 50 and in the shifted version, the peak has moved to uh, close to 0. The location of the peak has moved to 0. Let us look at some simulation. The original signal is basically a Gaussian signal with its peak at located at 0. And now, when you shift the signal by say 50 points, you can clearly see that the peak shifts to the value 50. So, the original signal and the shifted signal are basically, basically have the same structure, but their locations, corresponding locations basically vary by the amount of shift. This plot shows the relation between the shifting property and the time reversal for the periodic signals. Uh, original signal can be seen as a sinusoid and the red one or the shifted signal can be seen as its reflection. That is, in this case of sinusoids, time reversal and also shift of 90 degrees, the phase shift of 90 degrees basically produce the same effect. And we can also see that when the shift is exactly equal to the wavelength, then the original signal and the shifted version are basically exactly same. That is, they look alike. In the case of reversal, there is a similar property. That is, instead of sines, when you plot cosines, time reversal does not really affect the structure of the signal. These are called even signals or even functions. That is, the original signal and the reverse signal are exactly same. So, to summarize, we looked at three important transformations of signals. The first one is time reversal. That is, we look at the reflection of the signal by simply replacing the time t with its negative 
that is 82 inverse and then scaling property in which we replace the original time t the scaled value that is we multiply it with the scaling factor a which can be either greater than 1 or less than 1 and finally the shifting property where we replace time t with the value t minus t naught where t naught is the uh, time shift that is we basically move the original signal from its from its location to a new location in time thanks for watching